Hi, it's Trisha here at Club Scrap with the What's Up Buttercup page kit. We're going to have a lot of fun this month putting these uh, scrapbook pages together. And I'm really proud of the fact that there isn't a single scrap of paper left over once we're done completing these eight pages. So um, I'll set aside the ribbon that came in the collection along with those cute little envelopes, that awesome stencil that we've got here. And uh, we've got these really cool um, buttercup uh, satin flowers and then a set of a dozen little flower shaped buttons so lots of great embellishments that coordinate as well as our photo mats in fact why don't we go ahead and file our photo mats into our accordion pocket file this is mine it's very very well loved in fact i'm about ready to make another one of these um, i've been using this for a number of years and these four pockets help us organize all the items needed to assemble each of our four double page spreads in other words eight individual pages that are organized in pairs. Okay, so with the instructions I've already downloaded and printed, I can find out where these photo mats get filed. So let's take two pink photo mats, and we're gonna put those in the pocket labeled one and two, and then as well as one green photo mat. It's just a beautiful shade of green this month. Make sure you have one that's going into pocket one and two. Then we're gonna grab one pink photo mat and one green and put those into the pocket labeled three and four. Next, let's take all three of these yellow photo mats and place them in pocket five and six. And then take the three remaining purple photo mats and the last green mat and we're gonna place that in pocket labeled seven and eight. The next thing we'll do is take all the papers that came in the kit and organize them in the order they'll be used. So the first piece we're going to trim is this beautiful collage print. I'm going to take just one of those and I'm going to put it face down on my work surface. And then grab the other more white uh, dominated print, put that face down, and then take one green plane, place that on the stack on top of your trimmer and then another pink here from the cut aparts let's begin with the cut apart sheet that has all of this colorful borders on the edge here the one that says what is the best that could happen and then the other uh, printed cut apart sheet will be next with the bright colored borders here and notice i put those all face down again on my work surface then grab a green and this other white print with the flowers on it and then the really bright collage print will be next followed by the pink then let's grab our two purple that remain followed by the two yellow so once all of that has been placed in order let's flip it back over to where we started which is this beautiful print and we'll get busy with our trimming now i'm using my fiskers guillotine style trimmer if you don't have one of these i really recommend it i do have a little video that shows you exactly how to use this trimmer and why i like it so much with a lot of really helpful tips so if you haven't seen that video um, take a peek at that now in the meantime let's grab that print and we're going to just cut twice so let's place it in the trimmer at nine and a half and again just for review make sure the paper is flush against the ridge here and that you're measuring inches not centimeters and that you go to the left to find nine and a half two vertical columns so every column on here is a quarter of an inch so i'm at nine and a half here and then slide down to five without rotating okay so the first or the piece laying in your trimmer and the one right next to your trimmer base. Both of these are used in layout one and two. And then the other narrower piece goes in pocket seven and eight. And you'll notice that I'm gonna file these pieces into the pocket folder at angles so I can still see the letters and numbers on the side. And, um, but besides the, the, the unit is only 12 inches wide and so is the paper. So you don't wanna be jamming the paper down into your pocket. Um, if you haven't already made your pocket folder, I have a video tutorial that will help you uh, do that. So now when we trim this white print, I want you to have these larger flowers in the lower left corner. And we're going to go in and trim at seven and a quarter. Now both of these pieces are used in layout three and four. Then we're going to move on to the green. 
Our first cut here is going to be at eight and three quarters. Eight and three quarters. And then five and a half. If you're new to this and I'm going too fast, you can always slow that video playback speed down to 0.75. That'll slow everything down quite a bit, but once you get proficient at this, you'll keep up just fine. Next, I rotated this largest piece that was in the trimmer base and we'll cut three times. The first cut is at 11 and a quarter, and then seven and a half, and three and three quarters. Now gather up the three pieces that you just made that are the same size, and those are gonna go in three and four. I hope they're all the same size anyway. <laughs> and then we do have this, this narrow piece here that's going to go in five and six. And pick up the next piece. The next two pieces are the same size, but they'll be trimmed differently. So the first one will cut at nine and a quarter. And then both of the pieces you created will be used in layout one and two. And then take this remaining piece. We have quite a few trims to make. The first one is at ten and three quarters. And then nine, six and three quarters, four and a half, and two and a quarter. Two and a quarter. Okay. Let's gather up all the pieces in the order they landed. <laughs> So that last piece is on top. And then we're going to find that one of the, like we have a whole bunch. There are four that should be the same exact size. All right. So put one of them in seven and eight, basically one in each pocket, one in five and six, one of them in three and four. And then the final three pieces, this, the large, medium, and small, they all go in pocket one and two. And now we're moving on to the pink. Let's trim some strips here. We want a one inch strip. So the way I like to, to figure this out is the paper is 12 inches long. I want a one inch piece. So I subtract one from 12 and I get 11. So that's how all that's done. 11. And then I want another one inch piece. So I'm going to slide and cut at 10. And then eight and a half. Six and three quarters. Three and a half. Take the piece that's currently in the trimmer and rotate it so it's horizontal, and we're going to divide it into four equal sized pieces. To do that, we'll trim in all the numbers divisible by three. So we're going to cut at nine, six, and three. Nine, six, three. Easy as that. Okay, so now we're going to take two of these pieces that are the same. They're going to go in pocket one and two. The next one, three and four. And the final, seven and eight. Let's grab that next strip, the next largest strip to the right of the trimmer base, which is why I let that paper pile up and without moving it until I uh, direct us to do so. Our first trim here is at nine and a half. And then four and three quarters. The first piece, three and four. The next one, and also that little rectangle, they both go in seven and eight. All that's left now is the, some strips here. I'll pick all of them up and deal them from my left hand. Uh, the wide strip here goes in five and six. And the medium one goes in seven and eight. And the two smallest ones, one and two. Great job. We're already at the cut aparts. So you notice that we still have not uh, come up with any scraps. So I, I really like that. If you are new, you'll want to know that there is a little uh, registration mark here in the corner. That's a guideline. You want to try to line up the edge of your trimming blade with that little plus sign in the corner of this sheet. There's one plus sign on every, every corner. So it doesn't really matter what corner you start with. And what I'm going to do is just align the blade right in the corner there that I can, as far as I can see with that hash mark. Now, if you don't nail it on the first time, just be a little generous with your cut and you can come back and fine tune later. Now we're going to rotate and I'm going to once again realign this mark with the blade. And now that I've made the first cut, I can see the mark at the bottom a little bit better too, just to make sure everything's really lined up beautifully. 
And I can see that I just need to fine tune my cut a little bit. And that's what I like about this trimmer is that I can take off a hair with this trimmer. Not a lot of trimmers can do that, especially not these moderately priced ones. Now I'm getting close to where as I'm rotating through, I should be able to measure 12 inches and come up with a nice alignment with those hash marks. And that way we're starting with a 12 by 12 that is perfectly trimmed for our purposes. And then I'm gonna take those scraps and throw them away. And I've got my paper position in the way I wanna start trimming it. So whenever I cut a sheet of cut aparts, I always try to remove the narrowest pieces from the right edge first and keep my larger pieces on the left. Now this piece isn't all that large, but it's it works. Okay, so we're gonna cut at 10 and a quarter, eight and a half, seven and three quarters, seven, five and three quarters, and two and three quarters. Okay, now we rotate. And we're gonna do it with so many of my smiles, begin with you, will be on the right and we'll cut at seven and a half. Now, if you ha happen to have a scissors handy, I'm just gonna take, do you see how we have the smaller flower and leaf here on the lower right corner? I'm just gonna roughly cut this to take out that small flower and leaf. Everything on this portion goes in one and two, and the rest of it will be used in layouts seven and eight. This tag, now it has a tag shape, and we need to remove the triangles to recreate that tag shape. It's very, very easy to do when I have my trimmer handy. So basically I'm gonna put the tag shape in the trimmer so that I, I can guesstimate where this blade lines up to match the margin on the other sides. Now, as I bring my guillotine down, I can line up and visually see exactly where that cut's gonna happen. And I can quickly and easily remove those corners. And perhaps it's not perfect, but it's perfect enough for me. If you want it to be perfect, use a craft knife and cutting mat and ruler. All right, this piece goes in pocket five and six. Now I can take the next piece, make sure the word creator is on the right and we'll start at 11, 10, nine, eight, and four and a half. If you want, you can take a second and snip those corners on this tag here and file him in pocket three and four. Remove the corners from the next tag. I kind of close an eye <laughs> and line it up as best as I can. And this one is gonna go in pocket one and two. Then we have all these little one inch uh, pieces. So let's file those. Three of them, um, Joy is the ultimate creator. Those all go in pocket three and four. And then the other one that says, see the beauty in everyday things, one and two. Now we have some strips to file. So the one with the pink uh, buttercups on them, that's seven and eight. We have two narrow strips going in one and two. And then what's the best that could happen? Both of these go in five and six. Okay, that leaves no scraps other than those little triangles. And we can now follow the same protocol to remove that outside perimeter to reduce this to a, the most precise 12 by 12 possible. And I'll once again dispose of all those little ends. And let's begin now with the colorful borders strips on the right, as is our norm. And our first trim is going to be at 10 and 3 quarters, 9 and a half, 7 and a half. And four and a half. Now rotate so that this, uh, whenever, wherever life plants you, and we'll trim at nine and six and a half. Okay, file this giant one in pocket seven and eight. 
There is always reason to a reason to smile. Find it. One in, or, sorry, that's three and four. And then wherever life plants, seven and eight. Grab the next strip. Get your happy on. That'll be on your left with the circle on your right, and we'll cut at nine. That's uh, this large piece goes in one and two, and the circle five and six. We are going to do something we did before. Divide this into four equal pieces by trimming on the numbers divisible by three. So I know you didn't sign up for math class, but it still is helpful. And we'll trim at nine, six, and three. So nine, six, and three. Let's uh, distribute these. The yellow, what's up, buttercup journaling prompt, five and six. The one with, oh, happy day, seven and eight. The one with the flowers across the bottom or top, however you want to look at it, <laughs> three and four. And then the with the purple goes in one and two. These last two pieces, three and four, both of them. And again, that's it. There were no scraps other than our tiny little uh, triangles <laughs> rescued from the edges of the tag. So if you want to find a home for those, go for it. I'm throwing mine in the circular file. Let's set aside our trimmer and then we'll get to our dry fit phase. Now, if you've been doing this for any length of time with me, you know what comes next. We're taking the remaining stack of paper and putting the entire thing to the left of the center of our workspace and then just take the top sheet and slide it over. What that does is prepares us for the foundation of layouts seven and eight. Now, why not one and two? Well, I like to work backwards here. We'll go from layout eight to one so that you'll have all the pieces in place for every layout and layout one will be on top so you can then start and adhere everything. So if I grab my instructions and I go ahead and I look at page four. At the bottom, do you see the picture that says layouts seven and eight? and the green and the print are right here in front of me, exactly as shown. And that way we can then gather everything needed. Now you can ignore this list and I, I do take meticulous time, <laughs> copious amounts of time, to collect the list of ingredients used on each page in case there's any question. Um, otherwise you can look at your instructions and sometimes it's even better to look at the image of the layout on a d device uh, just to get more detail. Now I'm going to empty, and this is important, sometimes it's easy to go to pocket one and two, but I'm actually going to empty the contents of layouts or pocket seven and eight. Make sure you get everything out of it. And then I find that it works really well to situate the contents of the pocket right in the palm of your hand. Um, so if you play cards like my family, um, we play a lot of cribbage. When you deal cards, you deal them from one hand to the table with the other hand. And um, rather than picking one card up off of the tabletop, the same efficiency holds true. If you have the dexterity to keep everything in the palm of your hand, that will work best. Um, I'm going to take that printed piece and put it on the far right edge of the green. And then I'm going to just marry that up with a pink border strip here and then the pink print. So sort of just anchor the right side of the layout with fl florals like I have on the left side. You have those photo mats. I'm going to take the two purple mats and place two of them horizontally. And I actually used a grid ruler here and made sure they were centered. So the distance from, the t from this edge and this edge is the same. And I just centered it. Now we have included these adorable little envelopes and they are more like cosmetically pleasing and I trimmed this pink just big enough so it kind of looks like it's sticking out of the envelope if you want you can have it at an angle and I'm going to layer this all on top of this piece so this is going to go in the corner here and then the envelope will sort of sit and allow it to just go on top of the purple just ever so slightly it kind of makes it stand out nicely then there should be a small green in here there it is this green nests perfectly with the oh happy day journaling prompt to make it pop a little bit while it sits on top and centered if you'd like you can also glue on or sew on whatever your preference a little button i used our bookbinding glue from a needle tip applicator to add him then all these little flowers i took two seconds and i trimmed them out of the sheet and I arrange them in a cute little pleasing way down over here. I'll show you some ideas on how to finish that. Now we've got our vertical green kind of nudging up against the purple flower here. And then this smaller pink directly underneath it aligned with the left edge. Then this will be level. The purple mat will be level with the bottom edge of the pink. 
And then you can nest this pink with the sentiment and it fits perfectly right in here to make a nice little grouping. I added some uh, taffeta ribbon to the bottom edge of that. Now let me show you on the finished layout how I, I added all these touches. Again, I glued the button in place. Do you see how it's overlapping here? It's got a nice little sheen to it because it is metallic. On this one, the purple or the yellow uh, buttercup is the anchor. And then these two are pop dotted with foam adhesive circles. And then the leaf was tucked in underneath that one. So a simple assembly, nothing really complicated here. Of course, you will notice too that I used a quarter inch radius on my corner chomper. I'll show that to you real quick. This is the, the chomper and you can see on the edge, um, if you have one of these, the measurement is listed one quarter and a half. So you just open up the band here and let's see, let's grab this one. Pop this in to the corner till it's nice and straight on both sides of these guides and then just give it a little squeeze. Now, I also, you know, I started scrapbooking in the 19, early 1990s and I still have my original uh, corner punch. It was a very popular at the time and that still works too. I can use that as well. If you don't happen to have a corner chomper, just use a corner punch and I think they're still readily available. Now um, on this side, just two simple additions. This was uh, attached with foam adhesive and I did a double looped bow. I do have a video on how I do that bow. It's very easy. You can probably figure it out by looking at it, um, but you can check out my ribbons video if you haven't yet learned that one. And again, just book binding glue to add the button. I didn't bother sewing it. It just was faster to glue it. All right, that's it. Now, here's what I'm gonna do next. Take the base of layout seven, pick it up and slide it over and lay it on top of layout eight. Then take the next sheet Move it to the right, and that will reveal, believe it or not, the layouts for five and six. That's exactly what we see here. If you want to match, I can rotate. You can just, however you see this piece, a right side up, it's totally up to you. Now we have a lot going on with this layout, but I do want to quick show you a little tip as far as how I did the stenciling on this layout. Um, I always take my desk blotter. If you don't happen to have one of these grid paper desk blotters, they're pretty nice for stamping alignment and just protecting your work surface while you're doing projects. I used the Club Scrap Fuchsia ink and a ink applicator brush. Now I did go ahead and just freshly inked my ink pad, so it's probably, probably gonna be pretty vibrant. I had struggled a little bit because I hadn't freshened my ink pads in ages. So I picked up some of the fuchsia ink from the pad. I've got the stencil here. I'm just holding it in place with my fingertips and I'm going to apply the ink to the openings in a circular motion. And knowing that a border strip is going to be placed on top of this area, I'm not too worried about the edges, like the bottom edge of this. You can go past this edge a little bit and then Ta-da! I have some really beautiful stenciling happening there. And then you just kind of repeat that process. Go back to the ink pad as needed to reload your brush. And you're on your way to having a nice little custom border here. Slide. I love how these masking stencils just make it so easy. And I'm sure we have a bevy of uh, additional uh, projects and techniques you can do with this stencil coming up on the blog soon. Julie and Karen, I'm sure will help me with that. But take a look at how cool that border is and you can do the same thing across the bottom if you wish. Okay, at this point, I'll take everything out of pocket six, five and six, that is. Five and six, make sure it's empty and load it into your hand like your deck of cards. Maybe that's why I like doing this so much. I love playing cards, so my husband doesn't. So if anyone wants to come and you know, play some card games with me. You just say the word. I'll be there. Okay, what's the best that could happen? That goes up top. And that's a, just a nice transition then from the stenciled area to the plain area. And then we'll balance that by adding this piece underneath. In between that, and then you can use this to frame, oh, look at that, two vertical yellow mats. Now, if you happen to have some circle dies, I had a stitched circle die I used to just cut this out perfectly. It, would, it just fit like a dream. Otherwise, use scissors. It'll work just fine. It'll take you two seconds. You've got a nice circular element there or leave it square. And then we have the What's Up Buttercup journaling prompt that you can round the corners 
if you wish, and then nest it onto the green. I topped mine with a yellow button. On the right, obviously, I didn't need to do much because this is this is some vibrant, fun paper here. So I anchored my yellow mat with this pink strip. And then I added some just ribbon around the edge of this, some of the yellow satin. And I made a double satin bow here. And then I anchored it with this green. Now this is kind of like a deceptive little trick. But the green does not go all the way through to the end. It just kind of hits that edge of this mat a little bit. And it gives me a nice contrast to add my tag. And then I finished also with a couple of um, little buttons here. And I just added a third here because I had one and it was kind of sweet. And then I did a little uh, bow making trick. This is a new and not in the... Um, not in the ribbon video that I did. So basically you kind of hold your hand like the number four and you use your thumb to stabilize the ribbon tail. And then I went around my index finger over my third and fourth finger and behind my pinky. <laughs> and then I went around all of that again without weaving through anything. Then I took the ribbon tail and went under all of those loops in between my third and fourth finger and then you can go back around and then under that little wraparound piece which creates like a loop probably not doing a very good job of this come on little ribbon and then just pull <laughs> kind of center that up a little bit and you turn it over and you remove it from your fingertips and <laughs> you have isn't that just the prettiest bow you've ever seen in your life? I love it. You can adjust it and fine tune it a little bit, but beautiful. So I'll tell you, I have a scissors that I use just for fabric to add the little, the little swallow's tail. Just fold the ribbon in half lengthwise and trim toward the knot at an angle toward the fold and toward the knot. And then I'll give you that really nice little swallow's tail end. Double face satin then allows me to not have to worry about you know, is the side of the ribbon facing correctly? We switched double face satin years ago, and it, that's kind of something I insist on doing. And then that can be placed down there. We've got all this space, and the bow just adds so much. I feel like that little bow trick, it took me a little bit of practice to get it. So if it doesn't work on your first try, just kind of watch it a couple more times and see what happens. It took me a bit to get the hang of it, but it's worth uh, developing the skill. Okay, finished pages. Let's take a look. The only thing I didn't really walk you through here was I punched a hole in the top of the tag, threaded the ribbon through, and just wrapped it around to the back. I did nothing else. Just a little topper on the tag. And then on page five, you can see my stenciling here at the top and bottom, the addition of the button here, and then there's my stitched edged circle. Turned out really nice, but again, if you don't have something like that, a, you know, like a thin cutting die, you can just do it on your with your scissors okay i'm going to set this aside and then do our slide and stack so i'm going to take the, the base of five just that pink slide it over slide the purple just one and that should give me two purple side by side and then I'm going to, in my instructions turn back one page two three and four and again purple and purple is what you should have all right, now taking everything out of pocket three and four, you've got these really huge pieces. So those will just set down and the rest I'm gonna try to put into the palm of my hand. All right, let's place these larger elements first. We're gonna put the big one with the yellow on top over here on the right side flush with the edge. And then the other one is gonna go up on the left flush with the top edge on the left page. Okay, so then we can start building around it. I've got these other strips. Now, instead of nesting them onto another color, what I'm gonna to do to delineate this a little bit is leave an eighth of, inch gap, eighth, eighth of an inch gap between the white edge of the strip and then the white edge of the, the print and the same over here. It gives me just a nice foundation. Now, you should have three, a set of three uh, sort of medium-sized mats and those will puzzle in perfectly across the bottom of the left side of the layout. Nice. 
Then across here, I'm going to place the pink mat. It's going to overlay a little bit onto the pink flower here and into the purple flower there. Horizontally here, I'm going to grab the green. Now I, what I looked for is just to not align this corner with this edge. I'm going to bring it down just a hair to avoid a, a tangent. And then finish with joy is the ultimate. <laughs> Creator is the last piece down below there. The tag should have a nesting for some contrast. Once you get that attached, you can go ahead and clip the corners again. I punched a hole and added some purple taffeta. I'll show you that in a minute. Then you can round the corners on this one and nest it with our green, and that's going to fit nicely in there. Then we've got um, the envelope, the metallic envelope with another pink that fits. And again, you can angle it if you wish. This can nest on top if you prefer. And that's going to be placed there. On the left, you can clip the corners. And the way I do that is with a circle punch. So I think if you're going to own one punch, own a one inch circle punch. I don't like to have, I mean, punches take up a lot of space. I don't have many of them, to be honest. But I just kind of find the edge of the circle of that cut out there. And then I just move out a little bit. I just do it all by kind of by guesswork. So find it, align it, and then just pull back a little bit and clip off the corner. It does it in a perfect arc that sort of matches the, the circle cut out. It, it looks really nice. It gives it a nice little detailed finishing touch. Now, here you have these beautiful yellow buttercups. Now, we kind of thought it would be a perfect match to the yellow taffeta but, or yellow satin, but it was not. And that was okay. We got this nice beautiful yellow color that is like buttercup yellow and we're going to place one of them here and then balance that out with the other two and you can pop a little um, yellow button in the center of the flower to finish it off if you wish and again I just glued it in place now taking a look at the finished layout since all the pieces have been distributed here you can see the the piece popping out of the envelope and I did round the upper corners of the pink panel as well here are my glued. All of this is glued on and it's just there to stay. Here, it was a two-step process. I punched a hole and threaded it with some of the taffeta. Then I made a basic bow out of the taffeta and just glued it on. So the, the bow doesn't actually have to have anything to do with the tag. It's all about placement. It, it just saves you a lot of time and fuss and it looks a lot neater to do it that way especially if it's just going to be on a flat surface like a page like this now on the other side there's that other flower with the button in the middle and i used a craft knife and cutting mat to simply uh, cut around the base paper where i knew the mat would slide behind it so basically i take the take the photo mat and i mark with a pencil here and here here and here I guess to the right of the leaf and then with my craft knife I cut from pencil mark to pencil mark and this piece was already attached to the purple I don't recommend it doing it that way and my you can see my cutting marks kind of went through both layers but I just stuck the mat behind the white not behind the purple but that's how that works and I like how it allows me to keep some of that beautiful paper in the foreground and yet still allow the picture to shine because that's what this is all about is it's not just the theme or the paper or the designs it's really about your pictures right i'm going to slide that over and bring the yellow now into the foreground okay looking at one and two in my instructions i will then empty the contents of pocket one and two here we go the last and final layout I hope you're having fun. If this is your first time doing it this way, I encourage you to get these pages finished completely, like stick everything down, like up to, the, to the point where I've been showing you, then go and find your pictures. And you would be surprised at how much time you're about to save in your life. <laughs> and you will be so much more productive in your scrapbooking if you do it this way, kind of inside out, <laughs> have the pages done, bring your pictures to the finished pages, and shazam you're going to be so amazed at how efficient you can be notice i'm doing a right edge bottom edge here and then nestling a pink strip in there and you should be able to layer one of those border strips right on top got some nice contrast going on here now fit the fit should be just right with our pink horizontal mats and then we're going to do a vertical green over on this side 
along with two neighboring pink. So just make it so this pink edge doesn't line up with the border strips. Go a little higher or lower so that it doesn't, the edges of the, this piece does not align. The edge of this piece should not align with the edge of the border strip. Hope that makes sense. We've got a um, large nested outfit here for the top. And I love how the finished project turned out with my incorporation of ribbon. I'll show you that in a second. And then I kind of balanced some ribbon addition with this, this pink satin. It's just this ribbon, you're going to love it. If you haven't yet uh, felt something like this, uh, it's just got the coolest finish. First, let's find the mat that goes with the journaling prompt. That's easy. Then we have a medium mat going over here. We've got a skinny nesting with See the Beauty in Everyday Things going down over here. And then that'll be complemented with this buttercup cut apart here. And then the other skinny one's gonna go right up here. So this can all level out. I added a little button to the middle of this flower. And again, the ribbon. So let me talk you through that really quickly. Again, if you feel comfortable with the craft knife and cutting mat, I know that on the market there is like some sort of a notch punch. I'm not sure if Stampin' Up makes it or who makes it, but you don't need a notch punch to create a notch just to make two lines across the top edge of the tag with a craft knife and connect the lines to pop out this little slot. So it's not a slit, it's a slot. <laughs> this is about maybe a sixteenth of an inch wide. And then you can thread the ribbon through the slot and then wrap the ends and secure them on the back of the sheet. But I absolutely love how that is mounted in there. It's not, it's very flat. So especially, you know, card makers, this would be a great tip for you as well, making your own handmade tag. Rather than tying a bow or tying a knot that creates a lump that the post office doesn't like, this is a great and beautiful, attractive way to do it. I did the same thing exactly on this side and this side. So I got my slots made through both layers after it was nested and I clipped those corners. Then I threaded the ribbon and let the, the ends hang, added this with foam adhesive and then secured the ribbons tightly around the back. I don't know if you can see this, but I did a little bit of subtle stenciling with our yellow ink. I probably needed a re-ink job, but here you can kind of see it coming through here on the bottom just to add a little bit. Again, with the stenciling, I try to keep the, the techniques very basic for our completed pages, but of course your, your options for the stencil and its use are endless. It's just such a cool, modern looking thing. I can see all kinds of fun watercolor and gesso and paint techniques and misting techniques with this. It's gonna be a good time. Now, if you like this theme, head on over to the Buttercup Card Kit class. We're gonna be making this adorable little gift box and I love these for hostess gifts. If someone invites me over for dinner, I have a stash of these. I bring it over to the hostess along filled with some cards that match a couple of envelopes and my non-card making, non-creative friends or they claim they aren't creative, absolutely love these little gifts. So tune into my card class and I'll show you how to make this awesome thing with a total of 14 greeting cards and the kit includes envelopes too. So I'll see you over there. Have a good month.